Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I show you how we are going to convert a 93 G20 van from a rear drum brake assembly to a rear caliper brake assembly. Now this kit was made by Little Shop. Um, the customer actually brought this kit in and Josh and I are trying to sort out how this all goes together. It was a bit of a challenge because there's not a lot on the internet um, as far as how to um, install these kits. And I had actually been on the phone with the company themselves. And uh, unfortunately, during this process, they not only did they send us the wrong parts the first time around, we'll send the customer the wrong parts first time around. I solved that and then had them send the correct brackets. But they their 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 site went under a maintenance and uh this happened to be the time that josh and i were converting this van over so we couldn't even pull up their website uh but the way it sounds is uh even the website wasn't the best so and that kind of shows you right there but uh we we end up solving it and i'll probably cut out a lot of the garbage that um that josh and i have on here for video because um it's not it's not a lot of fun to watch somebody struggle um unless unless you're into that kind of thing uh that if you are then hang out because i'm sure you'll enjoy this <laughs> anyway let's get this rolling Okay, so after a ton of research, um, I finally figured out that that bracket that's in my left hand needs to face the rear of the vehicle, which makes sense because the caliper usually on a um, brake system will be on the back side of the axle or the back side of the wheel, essentially, because it kind of wants to grab that rotor on the upswing of the spin. Um, Anyway, that spacer that you see that I've added in there, it goes in between that um, flange and the bracket, depending on your make and model. And this particular situation needed to be in there. So we got that installed, and then we get the um, calipers themselves installed along with the rotors. Uh, I will say, after dealing with the kit, um, it's a nice kit, don't get me wrong. I do think they use real cheap brake pads. Uh, in fact, in later in the video, I'll kind of show you that we have a um, the right hand side. They didn't put the chafer, like the anti-chafe um, bracket in the, in the caliper because they sent the calipers with the pads already in them. And they didn't send me that anti-chafe uh, bracket. So when I was uh, field testing this uh, brake system, I got like this weird brake howl. Um, and I didn't realize it until I got it all back tore apart again and I realized that there wasn't the bracket in there So that's why my um, rotor was starting to make all that noise. I ended up just um, Beveling the edges of the pad and then adding my own um, Goop in between the pad and caliper itself and that fixed the problem 
I don't know if it's an ultimate fix because it could always come back. Um, but yeah, as far as Little Shop goes, the company, they're not bad. They don't make bad products, uh, but their customer service sucks. Um, I tried getting on the phone with them a couple times and it was like he was treating me like I was stupid. Um, and then also they could have sent way more instructions with the kit, which they didn't. And I will say too, if I would have sold this to the customer, I probably wouldn't have actually gone with this company because um, number one, there's not much support. So number so the, so, so in that aspect, it's not like I could support um, this company as far as if there was issues, it would be hard for me to back them up, you know? But since I sold the product, then I need to. Uh, but I, I just dealt with it because not only is it hard to get this stuff for like a 1993 G20 van, um, he also um, supplied his own parts. So you just deal. You just you just get through it. Okay, so I'm starting to have problems with the caliper not lining up with the bracket itself, and I can't figure it out. So in this process here, you'll see me try to sort it out. At first, I think that the bracket that I have that I installed is not the correct size, or excuse me, the correct side. And uh, I believe that Josh has my bracket. And as I walk over, you'll, re you'll see that I realize that they're exactly the same. I just had the calipers mixed up. Um, so I ended up putting I end up putting that same bracket that I just walked over to Josh with back on the vehicle and then I mount the caliper the correct caliper which I do not have in my possession right now on on my side and then Josh comes over and we um, discuss how everything needs to be set also that bracket that Josh has in his left hand right there um, and then I'll put it back on too you need to make sure that bracket is um, facing upwards so the plastic brake line or excuse me the the rubber brake line will actually travel underneath of the axle when you're all done and here I am talking to Josh about how I've sorted it out where I think Josh already kind of did but I also realized that the brake bleeder um, was upside down so that's an obvious sign that uh, you have the wrong caliper Okay, so I've got everything mocked in and loose. I just need to go through and tighten everything. Um, everything's set correctly. So essentially that first bracket that you saw 
um, in my hands, you need to make sure that's facing the rear. And then you also have to decipher if you need the spacer or you don't. Dep it really depends on make and model and how they were feeling when they built that axle. Um, I've even seen it where same year, same model, and you need the spacer, then you don't need the spacer. But anyway, I just have to go through and tighten everything up now. Um, but you gotta have that bracket facing the rear. Um, you gotta decipher if you need the spacer. And then you always just make sure your bleeder's facing upwards um, on the caliper itself. Um, and then I'll tell you if you have the correct caliper on there or not. Now, I didn't notice, and maybe you guys do in the video, but on the caliper that I just put on, the outside pad is missing that bracket that keeps it from making that uh, disgusting sound. Um, and I had noticed uh, at this point, obviously, um, the only, about the time I noticed was when it was too late. So anyway, uh, I'll go through and I'll tighten everything up and then I will put the uh, brake line on itself and then we will run new steel uh, brake lines from the T, bro uh, T block uh, that's in the center of the axle to the outside uh, calipers, so. Okay, so you kind of see it there, but my SD card failed on my GoPro and not to get sidetracked here, but I bought this GoPro thinking that this was going to be the answer so I can get you guys closer. And I'm discovering that I'm not the best at um, setting the camera where it's like a first person point of view. And I will get better at that. Um, every time I edit a video, I make minor adjustments and mental notes to make this better. Um, but I have realized like it was like I had to, I bought the camera and then they, they want a better SD card. And then I tried to do the um, GoPro app as far as making it a webcam for when I'm gaming. And that was broke. Um, and then as long as, as long as I use my phone, the app works really well as far as uh, linking to the camera. But if I want to use my PC, it's absolute garbage. Anyway, a uh, little bit of a side rant there, but I was a little disappointed with GoPro. But anyway, let's get back to the task at hand. And as you could see, I'm starting to run the steel brake lines. And I like to just kind of mold it to the old one, which in this, uh, as you'll see in the, in the video here, but in this situation it didn't work out the best for me but typically if you're running like a long uh distance on brake lines if you follow along with the old one then you can get it kind of close and uh eventually you know you, you mock it in there and it'll be close and then you kind of make minor adjustments but this one was a lot different i don't know if i mixed up the sides or if i was just that terrible <laughs> about bending it this time around but uh it would have been better off if i just laid it in the car
Okay, so that's the steel lines pretty much ran. I just have to cut them down and then do a double flare end on them. Um, and here you see me grabbing a marker so I can mark the line, cut it, and then flare it. Uh, my GoPro footage isn't the best, so I'll probably switch over to the main cam. Um, someday I will show you guys uh, the exact and proper way to do a flange, uh, but uh, I didn't have the best footage, so we'll just have to deal with the main cam for now. All right, so that's everything done as far as brake lines and the conversion kit installed. Now we just have to flush and bleed the rear brake lines and rear brake uh, calipers. And for this, I have this tool that I bought on Amazon. It's uh, pretty handy. It basically just uh, puts a vac on the bleeder itself. You, you attach it to the top side of the bleeder and then you put an airline on it and you pull the trigger and it's actually got a lock on it and that will put a uh, vacuum um, suction essentially on the brake lines which will pull brake fluid down the line so it also removes um, air but and then in return it's kind of nice for removing all the bad yucky uh, brake fluid so you get nice clean fluid all the way through the system here. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, basically, Josh and I just go through procedure, standard procedure um, of bleeding the brakes after we get brand new fluid to both the right rear and left rear um, caliper there. This van has a particularly small um, reservoir, so it took quite a bit of time. We kept having to get out, refill the reservoir, um, but Maybe in a future video, I will show you the proper way to bleed brake systems, but uh, that's how you convert a 93 G20 um, Gladiator van from a disc brake system to, or excuse me, a drum brake system to a disc brake system. So that's it, guys. I uh, appreciate your time. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye!